Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. We've been given a second chance this week. Indian summer. Warm weather has returned for a few days. It's been in the 60s and I've been taking the opportunity to do some open feeding. So in today's video, I wanna share how I've been doing my open feeding, talk a little bit about that. And I wanna talk about a change in the weather, which is actually coming this afternoon. We've got rain coming and in that rain, there's a little bit of snow mixed in. Of course the ground's too warm for it to stick but it's going to be our first snowflakes of the year i also want to talk about a product that i'm very very excited to finally have completed and out on the market i also want to discuss and share a little bit about brood minder so i want to talk a little bit about these today open feeding and with this rain and snow we've got coming we've also got 40 mile an hour wind gusts so i need to strap down some of my taller colonies so we'll be doing all of that today so first, let me share this exciting new product I was telling you about. Check this out. I've been waiting a long, long, long time. I'm going to guess a year and a half, two years to get this product. And what this is, is a new hat that I designed with my logo on it. As a YouTube creator, I work with a company called Spring to create all of my merch. And the speculations on creating a hat to be embroidered is a nightmare, let me tell you. The widths of the lines have to be um, a certain width. Um, the, the whole logo itself has to be, I think it was uh, four and a half by two inches. And you have to use Pacific colors. I cannot tell you how many samples I submitted um, to get rejected. I even had a follower, um, I can't remember his last name, but his first name's Rob. Um, he even, tried to create a couple for me and both of those were rejected so I would give up then I'd come back to the little design platform and I'd try again then I'd give up and I'd come back and try again well this time I succeeded so let me show you what we got here first of all what we got is my trucker cap look at that isn't that sharp got a couple little bees on here the JC's bees with a couple bees um, this is the trucker cap, and when I say trucker cap, what I mean is the back of it is vented, as you see here. And this one here, I believe, is $24 to get this cap. And it's right down below this video in my uh, description. You can find my merch store if it's something you're interested in. I also have, hey, you know what? It's time. I've waited a long, long time. Oh yeah, look at that. That just looks better. And then I have a snapback. And when it, they call this a snapback, but the trucker cap also has the snap adjustable snaps on the back. This one here, the same way, but it has solid material versus the ventilated. And then the bottom of the bill is green, as where on this one, it's black. It's also perfectly flat, and I know there's a lot of people out there that would wear it that way, but that's not me. I'm going to have to arch that. I know this is hurting a lot of you. I would have to arch the, the bill like that and then put it on. But boy, what a sharp looking hat. And I'm glad that the design file they went through. Let me give you a closer look at that. Look at that. Isn't that sharp, folks? What do you think? What do you think of the new hat? Now I'm going to go back to the merch store. Right now this is only available in black. Um, just because I submitted it so many times and added all these different options for colors and filled in the description about the hat only to get rejected. So the times after that I just filled, it, filled in the bare minimum and only went with one color. And once it was accepted I thought you know I'm going to get a couple. And, and then we'll go back and, and add more colors. So here in the next week or two, I will go back in and add some more colors to the hats. It'll be the same logo, just a different color hat. So if it's something you're interested in, oh, and this one is, the snapback is 26, the trucker's hat, cap is 24, I believe. That's what they're running. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you real quick. Now let's check out what the bees are doing. Indian summer. I'm using the warmer weather to my advantage. You got an open feeder here. It's about 
probably that full of syrup. And then I've just wadded up a bunch of fresh hay, stuck down in on top of it, since the tulip trees donated a leaf. And uh, overnight I kind of gapped this lid over top of the bucket. It's supposed to get a little bit of rain overnight. Um, the way I had the lid over top of the bucket though, the bees were still able to go up under the lid and climb over the top of the bucket. So we're pushing about 62 degrees right now and uh, it's nice to see the girls again. They've been kind of cooped up for a few days. So this will give them a chance to uh, gain a little bit more food stores. It's supposed to have warmer weather for the next few days so take advantage of it and uh, leave us open feeder out here. Now if you remember a while back I mentioned not to be doing any open feeding um, because of yellow jackets and hornets. But with the spell of cold weather we've had, the yellow jackets have died off and I haven't seen the first hornet so I have to assume the cold weather is taking care of them. So the only thing we really have to worry about now is just robbing from one another. Um, but the way I see it, as long as this bucket's here for everybody, they should come here and not go to the neighboring colony and try to rob. Old Sue's looking pretty good. And here's Stan. Eight oh three with the broodminder device installed. This one here was super super weak. I really should have combined it, and I didn't. Not seeing any activity, so I have to guess that they probably died, starved out, and died. Sometimes you'll have that. I mean. You'll have the weak ones fail and the strong ones pull through. And sometimes that's just what you need to do. Let the weak ones fail because you don't want to carry them genetics. And let the strong ones do what they do best. And then come spring, make all your splits, do all your queen rearing from your stronger colonies. Everything looks pretty good, really. Are these girls eating? Yep. How about these girls? And up front here in the front row. Don't see any active. Okay, there we go. Still got to get my mouse guards on. But everybody's eating. This is about two hours later than the video I shot earlier, and wow, they are thirsty, hungry. They have taken it from, well, earlier it was about the halfway point on the bucket. Now, it's like way down here. There's only a couple inches left. They are really sucking it down. That's good. That's good. If they can do a bucket like this every day. That's going to bring their their uh, food stores up quite a bit. And I'm really not noticing any ropping over here either. From any of these colonies. Just shows when you think you, you don't have any more time to feed syrup, Mother Nature can surprise you give you a couple warm days look at all the sugar on that leaf 
they step up on that leaf and been cleaning herself off. Pretty cool. Okay, so besides the open feeding, um, I mentioned it's going to be turning to rain and snow after this warm spell breaks. We got a couple days before that happens, but what they're claiming is we're going to have some some rain, a little bit of snow mixed in. The snow is obviously going to melt on contact. The ground's too warm, but uh, we're also going to have 40 mile an hour wind gusts. Um, with those wind gusts, anything tall like that double colony there, or the ones back there, those ones are. Uh, those ones are at risk of getting uh, toppled over by uh, the wind. So you want to do what you can to secure them. And what I'm going to do today, just on the taller ones for today, but I'm going to take a uh, winch strap, winch it here. I'm going to go at an angle to the back corner, and then I'm going to tighten that down. And that'll keep that from blowing over. Now, this row right back here that you see, if you remember, um, most of these are just stored equipment these ones here for i did that last week same with this one on this side the only actual colony is right here in the middle so you can see how it's sandwiched in i might scooch those over a little bit um, to keep the wind from blowing that over so anything you've got that's this tall i would strap down these single boxes they will be all right um, as it gets a little colder and stays cooler these colonies will all get pushed close together so they can share heat. Up here in the front row, we've got a colony that's sandwiched in between my queen castle. Here's the active colony. Here's some uh, stored supers that was on it. Um, I was actually using this and to raise all of my queens this year. So, Everybody's working hard, that's for sure. Taking down that sugar syrup, that's a good thing. Tried to get Ladybug come out with me. She's just tuckered out today. She didn't want to get off the couch. So instead, we got Debbie, the chicken that's molting. He looks kind of horrible right now. <laughs> That's all right. We're glad to have Debbie over here. She's working, looking for bugs. Debbie actually gives Ladybug a hard time anyway, so it's probably a good thing Ladybug ain't out here. It's funny, the other day I was stacking that firewood and Ladybug was watching me. And Debbie come from out of nowhere, ran up right behind Ladybug and pecked her right on the butt and tuck off again. Lady, ladybug, <laughs> she yiped and then ran in the woodshed like, what the heck, Dad? I didn't do nothing. So this is the colony that has the broodminder in it. That one back there has one in it. I haven't stuck any more in yet, but I'm going to uh, probably later on in the week. Broodminder makes these wireless sensors that sync with your wireless device, either your phone or your tablet, and you're able to uh, monitor the temperature or humidity, depending on which sensor you buy, in your bee colony. So you can do this throughout the whole winter and see how your bees are doing without ever opening the colony. Okay, so it's about eight o'clock in the morning, about 28 degrees. And just to have a little fun this year and to be able to monitor the bees, I'm going to go ahead and stick on. I've got a few of these. I need to get batteries for the other ones. Um, these ones I have just replaced the batteries in and they're 100% right now. So the one on top here with the T monitors just temperature. The other one has a TH, so it monitors temperature and humidity. I'm going to take and stick these and two different nukes and let's see 
The first nuke I think I want to stick one in is going to be I think we'll go right here, 803. I pre prepared this yesterday. You can see the bees all working. We got a nice cluster there. So this one will be a great one to monitor. So the way this will work is I'll just simply lay this sensor right up on top just like so within a few minutes we should start getting live readings on the temperature and the humidity of course it just came out of the house so it's going to take it a little bit for the temperature to drop so that's the first one the second one i want to monitor and this one so the one i just stuck in there is the temperature and humidity the one i'm going to stick and this double nuke colony here is just temperature. So there we go. Got it installed. We got the bees and trying to fly up in my face. Time to get it closed up. <laughs> so we'll give us a little while and we should have some live readings. Now once I get batteries for the other brood minders I have, we will be installing them and uh, some other nukes here. But I want to try a couple of experiments um, with the sensors outside of the hives to just kind of see how they react to different scenarios. So one of them I will be keeping out. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the Broodminder Hive Scale. This is a very, very handy device um, for measuring the weight of your hive um, in real time. And the way this works is um, you would place this under one end of your colony and then on the front, you would put a two by four. That way it's setting the same height. Now, in the winter, um, it's kind of important that you have your hive slanted. So maybe in the front, you would only have something um, three quarters to an inch thick instead of a two by four that's inch and a half. And that would give you your angle. And what the scale does is it reads the weight from the back of the hive, and then it automatically calculates um, what the hive would weigh if it was weighing the whole thing. So I think what it does is it takes the weight from the back and it doubles it. Um, there's actually some settings inside the Broodminder that you can change as far as how it weighs your colony. And um, since this device has come out, they've now came out with a device that weighs the whole hive. Um, it's a full hive stand, um, weighs the front, the back, the sides, the whole colony. But I do not have that device, so what I'm going to show you today is this hive scale. Now, I've showed this before in the past, but let me give a brief description or overview of how, or how it's put together here. And then I'm going to explain why I've got it out here and what we're going to do with it. So you've seen this sleeve I took off. This is very important that you keep this because it helps hold everything together. First, what you've got is a protective coating that protects it from the weather, and it's a very thick plastic as you can tell by the noise that it makes there. So that's just a clear coating that keeps the uh, elements off of the hive scale. Now if we flip it over, you can see here on the bottom, we've got uh, pretty much an overview on how to assemble and put it back together and how to set it up. Here's your picture. See how they have the hive scale towards the front of the hive and then towards the back, they have that arrow indicating a two by four or something to keep the colony for the most part level. You could have a slight incline and it won't impede on the weight itself. Okay, so now when we pull this part off, 
this is where all the electronics are. And there's another protective coating cover on the bottom. You pull this off and this is what you got. You got your battery. You got your battery removal tool right here. And then you've got your uh, devices that weigh the colony. So we'll put this back on now. Like so. And then you just notice the two holes in this metal piece. They go down over these pins. Just like so. Flip it back over. Put the cover back on it. And then we're going to watch me try and put this on with one hand. Probably not. Hold on one second. So that's a brief overview on the hive scale. Now one thing I really like about having this outside um, in the bee yard, besides the fact that it can weigh the colony, is that it gives an accurate temperature um, to my area. If you do not have anything else to measure the outside temperature, as far as a broodminder device, um, broodminder is going to use a local source to get your temperatures. and I'm 55 miles from Columbus, um, our capital, and I figure that's probably what Broodminder uses, but I can't say that I firmly believe that those temperatures are the same as we have here. So for that reason, I like to have this out in the bee yard, even if I'm not using the hive scale. Now the problem I've come across is if I put this under a nuke, let me show you. You can see it's set up, it's the width of a 10 frame colony. So if I set this under um, Sue here, under the back, what's going to happen is, is you're going to have about, well, if you look at it, it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a faded line right here, and there's another one right here. That's the width of a nuke. So what happens is, is you leave this much sticking out on each end, and you're watching your hive weight. And then we get some snow. And you get a couple inches of snow sitting on each end of the scale. Now your weight's changed. So that's, for that reason, um, I'm not sure exactly how to use this under a nuke um, to get um, accurate weights. Um, about the best I can come up with is you about have to make some kind of a structure over top of the nuke to keep the snow from collecting on the ends. So, for right now, what I'm going to do until I figure out that problem, and maybe one of you have a solution to that problem, and you could uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to store this Broodminder Hive Scale in one of these empty boxes over here. And that will give me an accurate outside temperature to go with all the readings on my Broodminder sensors that I have in the colonies. And right now, I only have two in. I have the... 805 right here has one and 803 right here has one so we'll be monitoring we'll be keeping an eye on on those uh, temperatures and we'll use the brood minder to get our outside temperature so I'm not sure which one of these boxes has got any room in it but we're going to stick it inside of one of these boxes Right there's our spot. So for now, this will set on top of that box just to give us an outside temperature reading. Well, Indian summer's over. We're sitting at about 33 degrees and we got a light coating of snow. Look at that. Isn't that ugly? Ugly stuff right there, folks. What I want to do this morning is show you how to sync the Broodminder to your smartphone. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the Broodminder app, which I have right here. And we can see it's now loading. On the left side of your screen, you're going to notice some uh, numbers. Like at the top, we've got 410926. Each one of them numbers are Broodminder sensors. So the green ones are the ones that it's detecting. 
the black ones towards the bottom are the ones that are not being detected, but they're the ones that are in the house. So I understand why it's not detecting them. These ones are out here in the yard. So let's try the hive scale for instance. So to sync to all the information it's gathered since it's been out here, we're going to simply click on hive scale, which is right here. That's going to bring us up to this screen. And I'm sorry about all the reflection. I'm just trying to give you a quick overview on what this is like to sync a device. Now we're going to click on sync device and it's going to grab the data. And you can see it's connecting to the broodminder hive scale, which is right back there in that row. It can take a couple minutes when it's cold. Connecting. Okay, there we go. It's found the information. It's now uploading to broodminder.com so I can look it over on the broodminder graph. Almost done. There we go, 100%. So now we just got to wait for here at the bottom to change to continue, and we are done with that device. So now we have our hive scale updated with all the current information. So now I could just follow suit and do the same thing with 410926 and 421BC3 and sync all that information and then we can go inside on the computer and check it out. But I think I'm going to wait till next week to show you what the readings look like. So if this is something that intrigues you, make sure you tune in next week. So there you go folks. That's the Broodminder, my new hat, which I don't have on currently because I'm getting ready to do farm chores and I don't really want cow poop on my hat. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments about anything I stated or showed in this video, please leave it down below and uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. If you've enjoyed this video, thumbs up folks, slam that thumbs up button down there. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe even slam that if you enjoyed my content. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Everybody have a great week and keep warm. Winter's coming. Okay, so I just showed you that I'm open feeding the bees out of a bucket with some hay in it. It's November 10th. This week alone, we've had four days of super heavy frost, folks. Now look here. Look at this aster. Sure, some of it's going to seed, as you can see here. But look right next door here. Look at all these blooms still. You got a bee fly. Isn't that amazing? And look at the goldenrod. Let me bend it down here. This is the goldenrod and what it looks like. All that seed. Look at all the blooms though on the aster. This is what I was saying uh, a month or so back. That aster can tolerate frost better than most of your uh, fall forage for the bees. And that includes the goldenrod. Look, I've got a wasp over here. No honeybees, but it's just, it blows my mind that it's, it's still got blooms when you've had frost, or when we've had frost as, as heavy as we have this week. Absolutely amazing. Thank mm -hmm. you.